Okay, guys, question six is also trigonometry, but it's starting to look at graphs and proving identities and general solutions. Okay, so 6.1 says, determine the general solution of cos of x minus 30 degrees is equal to 2 sine of x. Okay, so guys, you may not have understood this or been told this. Let me use a different color. We'll see. This basically represents one function of cos of x minus 30 degrees. And this represents another function of 2 sine of x. So obviously they're both going to look like this and they're going to carry on doing wavy things, okay? And when we say that this function is equal to that function, we're looking for the points of intersection of those two functions, okay? So to find the general solution, obviously we need to try and get it into terms of one ratio to find the solution, okay? So the right-hand side you can't really do much about. So let's look at the left-hand side. Okay, we've got cos of x minus 30 degrees, okay? So that's a simple expansion, okay? So this formula is going to be on your formula sheet. We're going to get cos of x multiplied by cos of 30 degrees plus sine of x multiplied by sine of 30 degrees, okay? So... If we use our special angles, cos of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 multiplied by cos of x plus sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half. And we get sine of x. Okay, so you keep on going, but remember, okay, we don't even need to look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So over here, you would obviously, obviously say it's equal to 2 sine of x. I've swapped the sides. But anyway, I'm going to swap them back now. So remember, this is still the left-hand side. It's equal to 2 sine of x. Okay. So now we've got sine of x and sine of x. So we, if we subtract a half sine of x from both sides, we're going to get 3 over 2x or 3 over 2 sine x on this side. And on this side, we're going to get root 3 over 2 cos of x, okay, because we subtracted half sine x from both sides. So, let me write this closer here. Because, remember, 2 minus a half is equal to 1 and a half, which is the same as 3 over 2. Okay, so now, what do you guys see? If I take this cos of x, if I divide both sides by cos of x, I'm going to get that these two divide into each other to give me 1. And these two divide into each other to give me tan. Okay, so we're going to have root 3 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2 tan x. Okay, so now if we divide both sides by 3 over 2, I'm going to be lazy and use my calculator. You can say that root 3 over 2 divided by... 3 over 2 gives us root 3 over 3. Okay, so that means that tan x is equal to root 3 over 3. And now it's very easy to find the general solution. We say shift tan of, we've already found that answer of root 3 over 3, and we're going to get 30 degrees. But now remember, because we're working with tan x, it repeats itself. For a general solution, you would say plus K180 because tan repeats itself every 180 degrees. And very important, K is an element of the integers. Okay, so that is your final solution. So getting back to this explanation over here, this would be the first intersection would be 30 degrees. And then the next intersection, let's say we carried it on, the next intersection would be 30 degrees plus 180. So that would be 210 degrees and so on. Okay, so that's what that means. Okay, so here it says in the diagram, the graphs of f of x is equal to x minus 30, that should be degrees over there, and g of x equals 2 sine x. Do you guys realize that over here, we said the left-hand side was one function, which is what we found over here. That's the one function. And the right-hand side is the other function. 
So basically, with this general solution over here, we found the intersections of both of those functions. So it says in the diagram, these two graphs are drawn for the interval from negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees. A and B are the x-intercepts of F, okay? So that's that yellow graph. The two graphs intersect at C and D. Okay, so we know that this first intersection here is at 30 degrees and whatever the yield is, okay? So cos of x minus 30 degrees is cos of 1 or cos of 0, which is 1, okay? And B, Okay, they intersect at C and D. Okay, so D we know is that 30 degrees. And then C would be the 30 degrees minus 180 degrees. So that would be negative 150 degrees. And then whatever corresponding Y value. The minimum and maximum turning points respectively of F. Okay, so I've made these colors a bit iffy. Over here, we would have to actually say that F is the orange graph and G is the yellow graph because that's what it looks like on our diagram. Okay, two sine X. Okay, so 6.2.1 says write down the coordinates of A. Okay, so remember A is the X intercept of this over here. Okay. So A will be where cos of x minus 30 equals 0. Okay, so remember this is basically just a cos graph shifted to the right for 30 degrees. Okay, so it's going to be 90 degrees minus 30, which is 60. Or no, it's not 90, it's 90 degrees plus 30. Okay. So it is going to be 120 and zero, okay? Because remember, the normal cos graph would intercept the x-axis at 90 degrees, but now because it's been shifted, it's 120 degrees, okay? 6.2.1, write down the coordinates of C, okay? So remember, we said that C is this intersection over here. Okay, so if we look at it, we already found that the x value is negative 150 degrees. And then if we look here, this graph is cos of x minus 30. Okay, so the lowest value that a cos graph, remember the range of a cos graph, because it hasn't been shifted vertically at all. It's just been shifted horizontally. The range is still between one, negative one and one. Okay, so the lowest that graph could get, this lowest, this minimum point over there is going to be negative one. So C sits at negative 150 degrees and negative one, okay. 6.2.2 says determine the values of x in the interval of between 100, negative 180 degrees and 180, which is what we have on our graphs, for which both graphs are increasing. Okay, so what we need to do, I'm going to erase this stuff, is look. Okay, so if we look at f first, it is increasing from this point here, from c, Okay, let me actually do it in a corresponding color. So F is the orange graph. So from C all the way to D is where F is increasing. But they both need to be increasing. So if we look at G, G is increasing from over here to over there. So basically we need to look at where these intervals overlap. So it is from that point over there to that point over there, this here and this here. Okay, so that interval, we know that this point sits at 30 degrees over there. I don't even need a bracket, we can just say 30 degrees. And this point here would be negative 90 
degrees. Okay, because remember, g of x is, is equal to 2 sine of x. So remember, sine of negative 90 is where we're going to get that turning point. Okay, so the interval where they're both increasing, you will say x is an element of not touching, because at touching, remember, it is turning point. It is not increasing or decreasing. So we're going to get negative 90 and 30 degrees, and that is where they are both increasing. Okay. 6.2.2b says determine the values of x on that interval for which f of x plus 10 degrees is greater than g of x plus 10 degrees. Okay, so do you notice that they are both adding 10? Which means we are shifting both graphs left 10 degrees. Okay. So first, let's try and find the interval for where f of x is greater than g of x. And if we find that interval and we shift it left 10 degrees, we can find the interval of this situation here. So where f of x, f of x is greater than g of x. Okay, so let me raise this again. f of x over here is the orange graph. Okay. So where f of x lies above g of x, where the orange graph lies above the yellow graph. I hope you guys agree with me that it is between these two points. It doesn't include them because that's where the points of intersection were. And remember, we found that this here is 30 degrees and this here is negative 150 degrees. But now remember, we are shifting, okay? We are shifting to the left. Okay, so if we shift to the left 10 degrees, we're going to get negative 160 degrees. And if we shift this one to the left 10 degrees, well, it needs to be like a tiny little shift, we are going to get 20 degrees. Okay, so that interval is x is an element of negative 160 degrees and 20 degrees. Remember, it's not including because if you include it, that would be where those two intersect. And lastly, 6.2.3 says determine the range. Remember, this is the y values of y is equal to 2 to the power of 2 sine x plus 3. Okay, so if you're confused as to where to even start, remember the range goes from the minimum possible y value to the maximum possible y value. So if we look at this, if we say, if we try and find the minimum and maximum of that expression first, surely we would find the minimum and maximum of this expression when raised to that power. Okay, so let's take a look at 2 sine x plus 3. Okay, the range of sine of x is equal to, it'll go from negative 1, y, to positive 1. I hope you agree with me. Remember, your sine of x does that, and over there it's 1, and over here it's negative 1. Okay, so that's the range of sine of x. The range of 2 sine of x, you basically multiply everything by 2. So you're going to get negative 2 y and 2 okay it's going to be stretched so from that original graph you're going to stretch it so that it does that okay and now if we look at the range of 2 sine of x plus 3 well we add 3 to both sides so negative 2 plus 3 is 1 and then y and 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, so now we're going to take this graph and we're going to shift it up 3 units. Okay, so that's what the range of this expression here is. It goes from 1 to 5. Okay, so now basically what we found is 
that if we take this whole expression, let me get rid of this mess. If we take two and we raise it to each of these values, we can get the minimum and maximum. So the minimum would be two raised to the power of one because that is the lower value, okay? Which is two. And the maximum is two raised to the power of five, which is 32. Okay, so that means that the range of um, y equals 2 to the power of 2 sine x plus 3 is 2y32. That means that y will be less than or equal to 32 and greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so it will go from a minimum of 2 to a maximum of 2. 32. Okay, so guys, when you get answers like this with the general solution, remember that whatever is on the left-hand side can be considered to be its own function. And whatever is on the right-hand side is it's also its own function. So when we find the general solution of them being equal to each other, we are finding the values of where they intersect. If one graph is equal to another graph, they are literally there. They exist at exactly the same point. They are intersecting each other. Okay, so when you're trying to find the general solution, try and get it in terms of one trigonometric ratio because then you can find that this angle is equal to this, sine of this angle is equal to this, and you can use arc sine or whatever ratio you're using. Okay, also, when they're talking about f of x plus 10, it means they are taking the entire graph of f of x and they are shifting it 10 units to the left or the right, whatever. If it's plus or minus, it'll be left or right. Okay, so make sure you understand what adding to each graph does. If it shifts it up, shifts it down, shifts it left, right. If you're multiplying by a coefficient, it means you're stretching it. Just make sure you understand what the transformations of the trig functions do and you will be completely fine. Okay, and that is question six.